Good evening, guys. It's Pastor Chris at True Life Way. I hope you've had a great day. I hope you have a great weekend. If those of you that do not know, I don't know how you wouldn't know, Thanksgiving is this Thursday. Woo! Can't wait. Uh, we are going to be preaching on Wednesday night instead of Thursday night just for that, that reason. But tonight I want to talk to you about, I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but uh, I want to talk about a title that's called In Control. And the title of the sermon is, I had some inspiration because I seen a wallpaper that I had on my computer a while back, and it was like the old Nintendo controller, but it wasn't the controller, I guess for copyright reasons, but it looked like it, and it says God is in control. And so that's the inspiration I had for this. But, you know, when it comes to us playing video games, you know, we just celebrated a birthday before we're going to start any further. Christopher's birthday was on Friday, and he had some friends come over. They played video games about all weekend on the Switch. They was playing on Xbox One, but yes, Christopher, so happy birthday to you. <laughs> but... And see, there was a whole thing about gaming, like this weekend. It was all about games. And so that's a, another influence. But see, when we're playing video games, we're taking control over a character. All right, and we're trying, and depending on what game it is, you're trying to, well, the, the goal of the game is to win, first off. But you're trying to beat the level. Get through, the, get through to the next stage. And the definition of control is the power to influence or direct people's behavior or the course of events. And that is exactly what we're doing when we're playing a video game. You're over there and you're controlling the person to go here, go there. When you're jumping, you're dodging, whatever the game may be that you're playing, we are able to influence that character or how the game's events will progress. Because some games are based on, on choices that you make in the game. But the main point of this message, I'm not here to talk, I'm not trying to compare God to a video game. But the point of this message is that God is control over our lives. He is in control over our lives. And too many times we're trying to take the controller so we can control what we do in our lives. You understand that tonight? Sometimes we're trying to take the controller. Sometimes we think we know what is best. And we think that we should know, uh, we should start calling the shots. Amen? Amen? Jeremiah 29, 11, I think this is the ESV version, for I know the plans I have for you. It doesn't say Chris has the plan. He, it doesn't say Chris knows the plans. It doesn't say Whitney knows the plans. But it says for I, that's talking about God, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. It's a declaration. Plans for welfare and not for evil. So he's talking about of being good, good things. To give you a future and a hope. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say there is no future for me. I have no hope. I tell you right now, there's hope in Jesus. Amen. Our scripture says that the Lord knows the plans he has for us. Plans for welfare, not for evil. For us to have us a future and a hope. We think we know what is best. We think we know what is good for us, and the fact of the matter is, we simply do not. The Lord will allow us to make decisions for ourselves. Do you realize that? Sometimes the Lord will allow us to make our own decisions. We're able to make our own decisions. He gives us free will. And I feel like there's a lot of times He's trying to tell us we are going in the wrong direction. He's telling us to not go over there. But you know... We think we know best. And I'm sure that there's moments when God's yelling, you're going too far. Just like when your kids are out there playing in the yard, in the front yard. Me and Whitney's bad about it. We're watching them out in the yard. Oh, you're getting a little too far. You're getting too close to the road. Come on back a little bit. Especially Carson on a bicycle or something. All right, turn around. You're getting a little too far out there. You know, sometimes that's what God's doing for us because we've snatched the controller from his hands. We think we should be in control over our lives. And he's over there saying, no, 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 you're going too far. I need you to turn around and come on back. I know what's best. But we steadily going and doing our own thing. Amen? But I feel like that's the way God's doing us sometimes. Just like we do for our children. How many times I had to tell Christopher when he was little, stay away from that stove, it's hot. 
Carson, turn around. You're getting too close to the road. I need you to come on back this way. But that's what happens when we snatch the controller from God. I feel that's what he's doing. Son, you're getting too far back. Come on, let's come on back a little bit. What about them times when you're playing video games? And I hope there's teenagers will watch this since it's gaming related. I hope every teenager on Facebook watches this. But how many times when you're playing through a game and you know they're just this one level that's so tough, it's so hard, and it seems like you just can't beat it. You know, there's been times I've played a game and I just can't get past the level and I end up quitting and trying again later. This is also known as rage quitting, though I do it without swinging the controller halfway across the room and all that that goes with it. In your life, you're going to face some tough levels. Whether you've got the controller or you're letting God control you, you're going to come across some tough levels. There are going to be times of sadness, fear, turmoil. But we must allow God to keep on with his plan. Psalms 34, 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. No matter what you face, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how sad the situation may be, I sought the Lord and he answered me. And he delivered me from all my fears. His plan is for me to prosper, to have life, to have hope, to have a future. No matter what I face, no matter how bad it gets, I will still trust in you. You know, we just preached that last Thursday. No matter what I go through, no matter the situation, no matter how hard it gets, still I will trust you. No matter how hard it is, no matter the circumstance, the storm, the trial, the situation, whatever it may be, I know he's in control. In the middle of the storm, in the eye of the storm, you remain in control. Amen. Do y'all agree with that tonight? That no matter what we face, he's in control. No matter the trial we face, he's in control. No matter the storm, he's in control. Still, I will say you are in control, Lord. You know what's best for me. You know what's good for me. I declare the Lord is in control over my life. I don't know why I'm going through this tough level in my life, but you're in control. And I know you're going to see me through. How many of y'all ever found yourselves in that situation? Those of you that's going to be watching, you can comment. Have you ever found yourself in a situation like, I don't know why I'm going through this, but I know you're in control. But sometimes we get that mindset, I don't know why I'm going through this, and I'm running in the opposite direction. I'm trying to get away from God. God, if you love me, why are you put me through this? Some of us need to hand back the controller. Some of us have been holding that controller for too long over our lives. This time we hand it back to who it, who it belongs to. We need to give the controller back to God, acknowledge Him, and let Him run things again. Let Him start calling the shots again over our lives. There have been so many times with me personally when I thought I could do it on my own, when I thought that I could do it better, when I thought that I knew what was best, that's when I messed things up. Sometimes I put myself through a hard, uh, hard level because of the choices and decisions I decided to make. Here, God, give me that controller back. I think I can handle this from here on out. I think I got this. And all the whole time, God said, no, 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 you're going the wrong way. I got this, Lord. No, I don't have anything unless he's got it. He needs the controller back. We are under him. He created us. He's the potter. We're the clay. He knows. Amen? He knows what's best for us. And any time I think I know what is good for me, I end up messing it up royally. I have to allow God to run the show. I must allow Him to direct my path. 
Direct me, Lord, where to go. It's not for me to say, Lord, I think I know where I'm supposed to be going. I don't. I kind of don't need you right now. But we do that so many times. Sometimes we do that and don't even mean to. Sometimes, you know, we're out there, we're ready to do this thing. We've got this. We're going to do it in the name of the Lord. And all of a sudden, we forget to mention the Lord. All of a sudden, we're trying to do it for Chris's glory. Whitney's glory. We forget why we're even doing it. Amen? Y'all understand what I'm saying? We have to allow him to direct our paths. Because the Lord, God's a gentleman. He gives us free will. We can do what we want to do. But what we need to be doing is taking that controller. Here, Lord, I'm sorry. You're in control. I've made a mess of things. You're in control. I've dug myself into a pit. You're in control. Because God is in control of everything that happens, good or bad. Sometimes we make things worse than they have to be. You agree with that? Sometimes we make things worse than they have to be. Started thinking about that with a Christmas party. <laughs> Had five teenagers over, all boys. It was loud. Hey, they had a great time. What, Christopher? He says, <laughs> but we have to allow God to be in control. When those boys come over here, <laughs> I had to allow God to direct my past because I was losing my mind. I will not lie to you. I was losing my mind because they'd be over here and then they'd go all over here. Then all of a sudden they're knocking stuff off my shelf and they're like, okay, I'm counting to 10, one, two, three, four, you know, doing all that stuff. Don't want to lose my cool, trying to be the nice guy. Then why are you in my bedroom? Get out of my room. <laughs> Lord, you're in control. But I started questioning it then. Did we make a mistake allowing this many people to come over? And it ended up it ended up being okay. But anybody that knows me, Whitney knows me the best probably in this room. She knows how protective I am over my stuff, over my belongings, and the Lord seed me, he seen me through it, okay? I allowed him to stay in control. And I think I broke. So and I think I broke. And that way Chris didn't step out in the flesh. You know, I don't care who you are. Sometimes we have a tendency to want to step out into the flesh when we should just let him direct our paths. That's what the key is of that little mini story there. But we need to allow him to be in control. Direct me, Lord, where to go, what to do. And I guess this is a timely message for you, Christopher, being a teenager that plays video games. Well, Carson, you too, you play games. But especially you, Christopher, because it seems like the middle age, the middle, uh, middle school age is where a lot of times the kids decide whether they're going to follow Jesus or not. And, you know, I was never, honestly, as a kid, I don't ever remember anybody standing before me saying, you're going to follow Jesus or you ain't going to follow him. Huh? What's your choice? What, what, what do you decide to do? Nobody really done that to me. But I was raised up in church and I, I learned the truth. I, and I, I could see how lives were changed. And I seen this stuff firsthand. Because, you know, it was presented to me one time, like, well, did you ever just make a decision? Like, I'm going to follow Jesus. Was you asked? Like, no, nobody asked me anything. But one day it was in faith. Because serving the Lord is all in faith. I can't see him. It's like the wind. I can't see the wind. But I can see the effects of the wind. And all that. Amen? But anyways, I have to allow God to run the show. Direct my paths. And Christopher, I hope you'll continue to allow God to direct your path. Middle school, high school, college years, whatever. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this night you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Lord, I ask that you will touch everyone that's under the sound of my voice, God. Lord, I ask that you will allow them to put you, to allow you to be back in control. 
Lord, we have to uh, decrease while you increase in our lives. We need more of you and less of ourselves. We need to ask for your will to be done and not ours. We need to get our will out of the way so that yours can be done. But Lord, it's all about you tonight. We love you. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church said amen. 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 I hope you got something out of this message. I know it wasn't a long message. But uh dog act like he's about to start barking. And I don't like going through all that. Yes, Whitney? Uh, it's not going to be Thursday, right? No. We're, um, I said it at the beginning. We'll say it again. This Thursday is Thanksgiving. So instead of preaching on Thursday night, we will be preaching on Wednesday night. Same time, 7 o'clock. But it's going to be a message on being thankful. Well, what else are you going to preach on for Thanksgiving, right? Being thankful. But instead of just being thankful on Thanksgiving, it should be all year round. Amen. But anyways, we love you guys. God bless you. And we will see you Wednesday for Thanksgiving message. God bless.